All right, um, we've got some breaking news. Special counsel David Weiss tells U.S. District Judge Marielle Noriega he plans to indict Hunter Biden. That's in uh, Delaware, Wilmington. Joining me now to talk about this and a few other things, we welcome back uh, James Comer, chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Chairman Comer, thank you for helping us out. I don't know, do you have any particular reaction to this news that um, he's going to indict Hunter Biden? I don't even know what it means, but what do you think it means, sir? Well, it's obvious Hunter Biden's committed about a dozen crimes. Uh, that was in the correspondence we sent to the judge, and she started rattling off the first two. The most obvious are the violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act and, and simple tax evasion. And the, the two IRS whistleblowers in their committee hearing testified to the numerous counts of tax evasion. So uh, I'm not surprised that he should be indicted. Now, I'm proceeding with caution with David Weiss, but I'll say this. This is an opportunity for David Weiss to clear his good name. Mm. This is an opportunity for him to do the right thing. I mean, it's obvious. I've said from day one that uh, investigating the Bidens is like tracking a bleeding bear through a snowstorm. There's evidence everywhere. So uh, this is the obvious thing that uh, a special counsel should do, and let's see uh, how it plays out. Well, this one, uh, Mr. Chairman, is, as you know, this is on the narrow charge, the felony charge of lying on a federal form when purchasing a firearm. The other things you yeah. mentioned, uh, the other things you mentioned uh, don't seem to be included in any of this. So uh, I, of course. I don't, you know, it, I, <laughs> I, look, maybe Weiss is going straight, as you say, he's going to redeem himself. Uh, well. But I don't know. This this just seems like to me small beer. Okay, but I'm not yeah, in the court, and I'm not the lawyer. But I want to ask you. Look, um, let's. T I know you're sub you are trying to subpoena, or you have issued a subpoena to get hold of all these emails um, then from the National Archives now. There's all, if my memory serves me, there's 5,400 emails uh, with the aliases that uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden use. But that's just, a, there's a lot more emails between the two of them, all of which suggest that Papa was very deeply involved as vice president in the son's dealings. Now, tell us, where do you stand on these subpoenas from the National Archives? Well, the archives is saying that... Uh because it happened during the Obama administration, that Barack Obama uh, will have 30 days to review all 5,400 of these emails in the pseudonyms. And then he will decide whether or not he's going to turn it over to the House Oversight Committee. So your guess is as good as mine. But at the end of the day, uh, we believe that many of these that were using the pseudonyms also had redactions that pertain to things about Hunter Biden, even redacting the, the fact that he was copied on these. So what Joe Biden's always said in the mainstream media has always gone along with is that, well, there was no, why are you going, why are you investigating Hunter Biden? He wasn't a part of the government and Joe Biden had a firewall between the government and, and his son. That's not true. Mm. We've proven that in the last two weeks. There are emails that went back and forth where Hunter's legal team was telling Joe Biden how to spin the narrative about the corruption he got caught in. Mm. There was copies where he was copied about Ukraine foreign policy. And we believe there are many more emails that the National Archives is sitting on. So you want to get your paws on these emails. I get that. Now, I'm not the lawyer, but uh, Jonathan Turley who's a Fox contributor and a pretty good lawyer, constitutional lawyer. Very good. His point, Mr. Chairman, was that if you go into an impeachment inquiry, that would give you greater authority uh, to execute these subpoenas and get your hands on the emails. Now, what do you think of that? And what do you think about the impeachment inquiry uh, as an important weapon here? I agree with Jonathan Turley. He's a, he's a terrific attorney, and I believe he's exactly right. And that's why Speaker McCarthy, I believe, uh, in a few weeks, will put this up for a vote among our conference. And I believe it'll pass. I believe uh, even the, the moderates and the handful of skeptics have seen that Joe Biden's just lied too many times 
about his knowledge and involvement in his family's shady business schemes. Look, this is going to be uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, political scandal of my adult lifetime. We've got a president that uh, was selling access to some bad people in some bad countries around the world. He's lied about it. And the government has been involved in a cover-up and obstructing this investigation. So these emails where Joe Biden was using an alias, a pseudonym, a fake name, and he was copying his son, uh, and he was coordinating with his son's legal team about spinning false narratives to the American people, should be concerning to everyone, and we should do an impeachment inquiry and have every tool at our disposal to get the truth to the American people. All right, terrific, sir. Um, just another couple things, sir. Um, uh, first of all, who tipped off Hunter Biden? Hunter, this is this weird story. The IRS wanted to question mm -hmm. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden is in his father's house. Now, I'm not sure what house that was, but he was in the house. I think it was the vice president's yep. residence. Um, somebody tipped off Hunter Biden, and Hunter Biden stayed in the house, and there was Secret Service, I guess, and so the IRS agents could not question him. I mean, it's like he was holding out. He was on the lam. Now, unlike, you know, why didn't they have a warrant that allowed him to go in? Or... <laughs> You know, look at what they did to Donald Trump in Mar-a-Lago, for heaven's sakes. In other uh, words, who tipped him off and how is this possible? I mean, I could just see Hunter Biden huddled in the TV room and then no one's going to mm -hmm. be able to find the guy. But actually, this is a serious business. What do you know about that? I know you're subpoenaing people, but where are you going to mm -hmm. go on this one, Mr. Chairman? We were working closely with the Secret Service to, to identify the person or people who tipped off the Secret Service, who tipped off the uh, the Biden lawyers, who tipped off the Biden transition team. This was at the end of the Trump administration when this happened. We were working with the Secret Service. They said they had uh, answers to all of our questions. And then, according to our source at the Secret Service, Mayorkas called and said, do not, under any circumstances, cooperate with the House Oversight Committee or Chairman Comer. So that's where the subpoena was born. Uh, we want to know who exactly tipped these people off because we want to hold people accountable. Mm. Look, there's the, the crime that we're investigating, and there's also the cover-up. Mm. And we want people to be held accountable in our government for covering up the Biden corruption. Last one, Mr. Chairman. Um, the matter of the, uh, I guess, 17 audio tapes uh, between the head of Burisma and uh, Papa Biden and, and Hunter Biden, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which was a straight extortion bribery scheme. Uh, uh, actually, the, the rumor was or the talk was that it was Papa Biden who told Burisma, uh, you got to pay me $5 million and my son $5 million. But leaving all that speculation aside, uh, can you help us out? Is there any new news on the audio tapes, uh, which, of course, could be so important uh, in any trial? Or, or deliberation? I don't have any new news on the audio tapes. I know this, the FBI never tried to obtain those tapes. They just tried to bury this under the rug. Mm. So the cover-up with respect to protecting the Bidens uh, has been ongoing for many years, and it spanned numerous administrations, unfortunately. Uh, but now is the time uh, we are on a trail We've been able to identify the fact that this FBI form existed, that the potential for these tapes was out there. This is consistent with what we found in Romania, where Joe Biden's family was receiving money through various bank accounts. That's what's alleged in this FBI form. This was years before anybody knew about all the shell companies and all the money laundering and all the bank accounts. So mm. this is very credible information from a credible source, but uh, I don't have anything new to report about the. So, so the FBI is stonewalling you. The Justice Department is stonewalling you. Uh, I don't know. Mayorkas is stonewalling you. Uh, that's a new one. Um, you need this impeachment inquiry. That, that gives you greater authority. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, Mr. Chairman, my last point. I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to break through. You know, this is uh, college football season. Uh, how the yeah. quarterback or the running back can break through the line, you know, and go 30 or 40 yards into the end zone. Um, what, uh, what can you tell us on that? What's your plan? What's your strategy as you reconvene? 
Yeah. We're going to court. We believe the impeachment inquiry will help us, uh, along with the other evidence in the case that we've built. We need these these emails to the pseudonyms. We need the non-redacted version. We also need access to about two to four more bank accounts that we believe will uh, implicate Joe Biden, as well as the emails that we believe will show an extensive coordination between the Biden shady business schemes and Joe Biden. Yes, sir. Chairman Jimmy Comer, we appreciate your time. Best of luck. Uh, hopefully we'll talk soon.